Hey, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the Town of Stellar Council meeting April 8th, 2024, 5.30 p.m. start time here at the Council Chambers. The agenda is in front of us. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? I have one addition, uh, Your Worship, under correspondence. I'd like to add a thank you from the Stellarton Westville Police Youth Corps. Okay, thank you. We'll make that a six or eight D. And if that's all, we'll ask for a motion to approve the agenda, please. I'll move, Your Worship. I'll second that, Your Worship. Moved by Councillor Pence, second by Councillor Knight. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded. Most carry minutes. We thank you. Item two is to approve the minutes to distribute electronically. They're also part of the package. Are any errors or omissions? I so move. <clears throat> I'll second that. Moved by Councilor Wan, second by Deputy Mayor Campbell. All those in favor, say no, saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded. Most carried unanimously. Thank you. Is there any business arising from the minutes? Hearing none, we'll move on to a presentation for the 2024 2025 operations and capital budget, as well as the tax rates for 2024 25. Council has their packages in front of them. <clears throat> so we'll start with the general operating budget, which should be the first in your package. We are presenting a balanced budget as required, and we're proposing no tax rate increases. The assessments for 2024 residential and resource at 229 million 365 700 commercial assessment at 94 million 596 thousand two hundred maintaining the rates at $1.88 residential and resource and commercial at $4.30 per $100 of assessment, gives us total taxes of $8,379,712. And that amount carries down into the budget details below. Uh, to describe the budget for 23-24 is your left-hand column. The middle column is projected for 23-24, not final, but projected. And the budget for 24-25 is the right-hand column. So total assessable property taxes at the amount of 8379712 That's an increase uh, in uh, residential of 285000 and commercial for 359000 To note, this is tax rate all-inclusive. The town does not have any additional user fees. Special tax agreements for 21,000. Uh, that is a calculation based on uh, revenue for both Alliant and Heritage Gas. <coughs> the deed transfer tax, this is 100,000 of revenue and 100,000 of expense estimated. Uh, and this money is collected and remitted for the Wellness Center and the hospital. So net zero impact on the budget. Grants in lieu of taxes at 217,184. Uh, those grants are for the post office, CRCMP, the Department of Mines, uh, Nova Scotia Power, and Fire Protection at NSCC. Other revenue owned sources at 166320 We are projecting a decrease over the prior year, but this is where we do conservative budgeting. This is mostly interest, the impact of interest. Um, so it also includes dispatch, and of course, we're no longer doing dispatch for the Firefighters Association. It also includes sale of service, and we're not doing recreation programming for day camps, so it's reduced for that as well. Unconditional transfers, this is the financial capacity grant and the HST offset, both of which are outside the control of the town, budgeted at 520684 Conditional transfers at 102500 that's for street crime, uh, and student funding as well as for the MPAL, and of course we're reduced for MPAL as we're not having a full-time recreation person. Internal transfers at 235175 for the 24-25 budget year. This is the transfer from the water utility to the general operating fund to cover the administrative costs funded by the general operating fund on behalf of the utility. To note, the 23-24 projected, we are projecting a $150,000 deficit. So we are anticipating both the transfer from the water utility plus a transfer from operating reserve to balance 23-24. Overall, there's about a 3.3% increase in revenue to 9,742,575.
On the expenditure side, total legislative services at 124735 That's always higher than, than actual projected because you don't tend to spend all of the money budgeted. Travel expenses are budgeted at $1,000 per person, generally not used. We also have the NSFM and the FCM conferences in those numbers. General government services at 1,151,703. There is an increase here. Uh, there's the overall increase of 2.25%. There's also funding there for work on the town hall out of the security assessment. Sick leave valuation is to be done this year. We have the election, so the election costs. There's increase in grants, annual grants as requested by council. And there's an, also an increase for some heritage product, projects. Protective services policing at 2,323,472. This is a small decrease over the prior year. Um, this does include the, uh, an estimate for the new contract, but the prior year had additional sick leave costs, which we're not anticipating to be repeated in the current year. That's the reason for the decrease. Protective services fire for 551,254. There is a decrease within fire for the fire protection, which is paid to our water utility. And there is an increase for repointing of the brick on the building and costs for new members, such as uniforms. Transportation services at 2,357,767. There is an increase here as well. There's an additional person whose focus will be on horticultural for the, uh, for the town. There is the normal 2.25% increase. There's also summer standby charges, um, which have been budgeted for, not used in prior years. We always allow room for repair and maintenance on vehicles for unexpected situations. Uh, gas and diesel is up. Uh, this, there's an increase for the sweeper truck. We didn't have it for as much last year as anticipated uh, for some signage, uh, as well as regular storm sewer maintenance. Environmental services at 863665. This is a decrease over pr projected for 2324 for the revised funding formula for Eric. Recreation services at 143800. Um, just to note, the wellness center is, would be considered a recreation service. We just define it as a separate line item. So recreation services in total would be the combination of the two. But at 143,800, it is a decrease over the prior year as we're not having a full-time person. Uh, so with no day camps, um, but it does include regular maintenance on the fields and $20,000 for some playground pieces. Pictou County Wellness Center at 375. This is an estimate of the share of operations for the town of Stellarton for the Wellness Center. <coughs> Cultural services at 83892. That's the community center, library, and deans. Nothing significant over the prior year. Financing for principal and interest is up to 592,273. We've added the principal payment for the curbs and the fire truck. Uh, there's also interest uh, for the fire truck for the full year. We were only a half a year last year, plus the equipment that is planned in the capital budget for the current year. Outside service providers to the town, 149,680. This is PVSC, Chad, Pictou County Transit, and Homecoming. Nothing significant year over year. Outside service providers province, this number has decreased to 925334, which is now just the school board. We don't have corrections and we don't have the housing deficit anymore. Those will be funded by the province. And the transfer, the detransfer tax, again, we had 100,000 in revenue, so we have a 100,000 estimate in expense. And that, again, is the remittance to the wellness center and hospital. Balance to zero. Overall total expenditures at 9,742,575, which is a 3.3% increase over the projected for 2324. Any questions on general operating? Okay, if not, um, I'll move on to the general capital budget for the Sorry, the capital budget for the general operating fund. We have a total of million eight hundred fifty thousand budgeted for capital. Sidewalk plow and attachment for two hundred thousand. Two public works for one hundred fifty thousand. This is part of our annual replacement program. We are working toward getting to one year, but to catch up, we have two trucks for the current year. 
a one-ton truck, we are replacing a 200, 2004 model, 7545. Uh, there's a required DFO study, uh, a stage discharge curve update, and fish assessment on fish ladder and spillway. That's professional, professional fees for that project. Power and pumping at 219393 This is allowing for a general increase. This is both power and pumping repairs and maintenance, as well as electricity. Purification at 710302 We're continuing the powdered activated carbon for the better test and quality of the water. There's increase for testing and for the training to maintain certifications at the water treatment plant. Transmission and distribution at 215501 we, we always budget for unexpected repairs and maintenance. This would be the water main breaks. We hope to come in less than that number, but we anticipate the worst case scenario. Admin in general at 262675 Most of this is paid to the general operating fund, which is to fund the administrative costs because the water utility does not have its own administrative department. Depreciation at 425000 that is a calculation relative to asset base. That money is actually transferred from the Water Utility Operating Fund and put into reserve, the purpose of which is to continually replace the water utility assets. Taxes at 138929 that again is paid to the Town of Stellar and General Operating Fund and with no tax rate increase. Overall total expenditures at 2,009,344. $2, There's interest in principal on debt at 435,704. Again, decreasing, interest is decreasing as the debt is slowly decreasing. We need a transfer from surplus to balance the budget at 311,373. We're projecting 274,856 for 2324. The utility does have an operating surplus of over one million, just over one million dollars at the end of March 2023. So both of those transfers, projected 2324 and budget 2425, are covered by the current surplus. Okay. Then the water utility capital projects, the PLC upgrade, that is basically the brains of the computer at the water treatment plant for $120,000. Uh, fence at the reservoir, this is to replace and move it to the top of the hill to, for $27,000. And then the infrastructure project, now this is the water line portion of those infrastructure projects, Kirk Avenue at $590,000 and the completion of Claremont for $708,000. So overall water utility capital projects at 1,445,000, funded 926,000 from water depreciation and ICIP federal and provincial funding for 519,000. Questions for Another resolution to read for this one? But to approve. Just to approve? <clears throat> I so move. I'll second that. Thank you. Move by Councillor Lawan, seconded by Deputy Mayor Campbell. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded. Most carry nicely. Um, thank you very much, Brenda. I hope my thingy was on. It just. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brenda, for your work on this. We appreciate it. Thanks to all the staff. Okay, so we're going to move on to a couple of proclamations. The first one is Lyme Disease Awareness Month for May. Whereas Lyme disease is a serious illness caused by the bite of a back, black leg tick infected with bacterium Borrelia burgdorferi, and whereas black leg ticks carry a variety of diseases or illnesses that can now be found in all parts of Nova Scotia, and whereas awareness education and practicing preventive measures such as daily tick checks and proper tick removal can help reduce your chance of contracting tick-borne diseases. Therefore, it be resolved that I, Mayor Danny McGillivray, and Stellar and Town Council do hereby proclaim May 2024 as Lyme Disease Awareness Month. Have a motion, please. So move. Second that, Your Worship. Um, Susan, do we have lighting for that? They request that we 
display that we have a lighting for doing. Okay, thank you. So, moved by Councillor Pence, seconded by Councillor Knight. There's no further questions. All those in favor, by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded. Most carried an answer. Thank you. Next is a proclamation for Gaelic Nova Scotia Month. Uh, whereas 2024 marks the 28th anniversary of Gaelic Nova Scotia Month, which is a time to embrace, honor, and celebrate the history, culture, language, contribution, and achievements of Gaels across the province. And whereas Gaelic culture is an integral part of the identity of Nova Scotia, and Gaels represent one of the earliest non Indigenous cultural groups to settle in Mi'kma'ki. And whereas new generations of language learners and cultural champions are carrying on and building upon the legacy of Gaelic Nova Scotia tradition bearers. And whereas the town of Stellar is committed to collaborating with Gaelic communities to support the growth of Gaelic as part of the linguistic landscape of Nova Scotia through opportunities for language acquisition and capacity building within communities to ensure Gaelic language and culture will thrive in Stellarton. Therefore, I, Mayor Daniel McGillivray, Stellarton Town Council, do hereby proclaim May 20th, 24, as Gaelic Nova Scotia Month in the town of Stellarton. So move. I second that. Moved by Councillor Pence, seconded by Deputy Mayor Campbell on the question. Yeah, on the question, Dan, do they raise a flag? That was, so we were going to uh, say is, is there a date for that, Susan? Yes. That will be up to Council. Do you want to set it now? Sure. Yeah. The only day we can't do it is May 1st because that's uh, the They're busy. not available then. They'll be in Halifax. Um, yeah. April 24th, Wednesday, April 24th. Oh, you want to do it before May? Uh, yeah, we should wait, you're right. Yeah. Uh, Friday, May 3rd? Yep, sounds good. Works for me. Yeah. What time of day do you want? Usually, probably they're coming from Halifax, so you want to do like a 11? 11. 11 sounds good. Gary's going to wear his kilt. I'll wear my kilt. <laughs> <laughs> I can reach out to them and work that out with them. Perfect, thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. 11 on May 3rd. And I will send that out for Council. Okay, good. Perfect. Um, so, I, did I call for the vote on it? Yes, yeah, so you just know you didn't call for a vote. Okay. It's been yeah. moved and seconded. So all those in favor of now saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. Most carried Nancy. Thank you. We will move on to reports and staff. The first one, 7A, Chief Mark Kobach, Stellar Police Service. The Stellar Police Commission met last week a couple times. Uh, we went through this report. Any questions or comments on it? I don't have any questions or comments. Anybody else? Okay, hearing none, can I have a motion to approve it, please? So moved. I'll second that. Moved by Councillor Knight, second by Deputy Mayor Campbell. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. Most care and answer. Thank you. Uh, 7B is Fire Chief Michael Selvin, the Fire Department report. Is there any questions or comments on that? I move the report as written. Uh, Your Worship. I'll second that, Your Worship. Moved by Councillor Pence, second by Councillor Knight. All those in favor of saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded. Most care and answer. Thank you. <laughs> 7C is Paige Draper, Marketing Communications. Any questions or comments on that one? Just mentioned the volunteer reception is uh, Thursday, April 18th at the Stellarton Fire Hall. We're going to recognize our, volu our valued volunteers at that time. Good. Homecoming is taking place July 24th to 28th. And there's uh, on our social media posts, there's important highlights. There's employment opportunities. We're accepting applications for several positions right now within the town. There are multiple summer positions that are open until April 14th for submissions. And the position as Parks Beautification Coordinator with Public Works opened until April 11th. That's a new position we're at this year in our budget. Um, no further comments or questions. Can I have a uh, motion, please? So moved. I'll second that. Moved by Councillor Knight, nice. second by Deputy mm -hmm. Mayor Campbell. All those in favor are saying aye. Contrary in mind, motion carried. Thank you. 7D is the uh, town engineer, Blaine Murray. Questions or comments on that one? I so move. Move by Councillor Wan, second by Councillor Pencil. Just on the question, I'll highlight a couple of things. The Kirk Avenue infrastructure upgrades the tender came in April 4th, so that should be done now. Yeah, uh, Blaine will have a um, full report on those tenders at Committee of the Whole for your approval. Oh, okay, perfect. Thank you very much. And just want to read a couple of things. Um, 
Public Works proposed a capital purchase for a new backhoe snow bucket, which we approved in council at our uh, budget. Uh, because they thought the old one could not be repaired, but Public Works said uh, I, Mass and Company, bend some sheet metal and staff well with the material together, and the department will no longer need a capital purchase, save the town fifteen to $18,000. Just thank you to Public Works for that. And the lack of snow on March ladder the staff to perform long overdue maintenance on plow equipment. Multiple snow and ice events without breaks can make it hard to perform equipment maintenance. The same people who plow the streets are the same people who fix water breaks, perform maintenance to sewer streets and buildings. Unlike bigger municipalities who have dedicated staff to each of these activities, our staff are involved with it all, so thank you to Public Works for that as well. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Sir? On the question, Worship, so I just want to bring up a point and thank the uh, Public Works there uh, for the heritage rooms. They're really good and coming over. We depend on them wholly to have the heritage room painted, cleaned, or whatever needs to be done, and they do a great job. I awesome. just want to thank them for that. On the question, we have a very versatile bunch of employees, I would say. Versatile and dedicated, we appreciate yes. them. Thank you, Councillor Pence. So uh, all those in favor of saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded. Motion carried unanimously, thank you. Move on to uh, reports or correspondence, uh, 7-8-A, the province of Nova Scotia. Uh, yes, correspondence was received from Municipal Affairs and Housing on March 28, 2024. Dear Mayors and Wardens, it has been a tremendously difficult 18 months for Nova Scotia as it relates to extreme weather events. We've endured generational hurricanes, wildfires and floods that have had a devastating impact on our communities and the residents we serve. Municipalities play a significant and key role in emergency preparedness, response and recovery. I want to acknowledge your leadership during these difficult events and thank you for your commitment to the response. We know that climate change is causing more frequent and severe weather events and as governments, we share a responsibility to work in collaboration to protect our communities. Historically, our emergency response has been, a, has been very effective. But with the increased intensity and frequency of events, we need to increase our capacity and strengthen our overall preparedness, response, and recovery. That is why today, March 28, 2024, our government tabled legislation that will establish a new provincial department of, of emergency management. Once established, it is the intention that this new department will have a mandate to lead, direct, and support a coordinated whole-of-government response to emergencies and transition to a culture of preparedness across the province. Within this new department, we will work to strengthen our collaboration with communities and our partners across the province, like municipalities, so we, better, so we are better prepared for the future. We are also launching the Nova Scotia Guard, which will be a group of individuals and organizations from across the province who will help communities during and after emergencies. The Nova Scotia Guard will include volunteers with specialty skills, such as firefighters, as well as other members of the public to fill a variety of roles depending on the emergency needs. Those interested in volunteering to help Nova Scotia be ready in the event of an emergency can let the province know by completing the early registration form at uh, ns.211.ca. The legislation introduced today also requires the support of our municipal partners. In the months ahead, we look forward to working with you and speaking with you about regulations respecting the relationships between municipalities and regional emergency management offices, the provision of fire dispatch services through regional emergency management offices, the creation of vulnerable person registries and their implementation, as well as the development of a regional emergency alert system and the participation of municipalities in the system. This direction is built on significant engagement with Nova Scotians over the past year and focuses on three key areas, communication, coordination, and volunteer management. Combined, these efforts will result in greater preparedness, impact, and efficiency before, during, and after an emergency. Honorable John A. Lohr, Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. So I'd like to thank Minister Lohr for the letter and uh, pleased to see the, I think it's the interest, or pleased the Department of Emergency Management, it's a new department, I think that's a great idea. And the Nova Scotian Guard sounds like a good idea as well. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. So thank you to the province for that. Any questions or comments? I uh, just I think it's a fire, de our fire department is a big part of that. And of course, uh, Susan, uh, when we had the last one, yourself and uh, Paige were, uh, jumped in there when we had the floods down in Blue, Blue Acres. So I think we got a kind of a head start here. On it. Good point. Yeah. Thank you, Councilor Knight. Thank you for your time and effort. Thank you. We don't need a motion for that? Nope, it's just for information. 
move on to uh, 8B, the province of Nova Scotia. Again. Uh, another um, piece of correspondence from Minister uh, or Honorable John Lohr. Um, March 28, 2024, and you are well aware of this one. Uh, Dear Mayors and Wardens, I am pleased to inform you that a significant milestone has been reached for our province and all municipalities. As of today, March 28, the new service exchange agreement has been signed. Under this agreement, which comes into effect on April 1, 2024, the province will be making an historical annual investment of $82 million. This is a $52 million increase from the $30 million in funding through annual Municipal Financial Capacity Grant. The collaborative spirit and dedication exhibited by both the province and municipalities over nearly two years of discussions have culminated in this agreement. It truly represents a comprehensive understanding of the evolving needs and aspirations of Nova Scotians, furthering the prosperity of our communities. As we move forward, I encourage you to review the details of the service exchange agreement. Thank you for your continued dedication to serving your communities. Together, we continue to make meaningful strides towards growth and well-being for all Nova Scotians. And that is where um, the corrections and housing is no longer a, an expenditure for the municipalities. Which is a big bonus to the town of Stalwart. So we once again thank the province for that. It's a big cost. A big cost. It's not in our shoulders anymore, and we appreciate it. Uh, 8C. I received a request from GFL Environmental um, on March 27th uh, regarding um, a request for counsel for a noise bylaw exemption. On behalf of GFL Environmental, we are submitting this letter to request your consideration for an exemption to a bylaw that would allow us to service certain customers' solid waste streams before 7 a.m. Under your noise bylaw, providing services to local business within Stellarton area is restricting our employees from serving these businesses safely and efficiently during a time when traffic flow is low. As an essential service provider, we do not want to see any business have their waste services disrupted, as this can lead to unsightly garbage overflow and increased pest concerns. The customers who are affected by this bylaw are to name a few, Tim Hortons, Wholesale Club, Jubilee Avenue Doctor's Office, NSCC Picto Campus, and Stellarton Town Hall. All these sites require early access, allowing GFL trucks to safely gain access to the waste containers before traffic becomes too heavy, which would become an unsafe environment for our employees as well as motorists and pedestrians. Tim Hortons is one location that requires us to be in and out before 5.45 a.m. due to patrons filling up their drive through area. Wholesale Club is another high-risk location where we must back in out onto North Ford Street. This area needs to be serviced before 5 a.m. to allow safe entry and exit when traffic is not at a high volume. This site has also morning deliveries that would pose an access issue. Sobeys is another location that requires early morning services. The offices need to be completed prior to staff arriving because their staff enter where the waste containers are placed. The Sobeys store location must be completed before the delivery trucks arrive. Different times of the morning make it impossible to service their waste. As you can see, there are multiple locations that pose safety risks where traffic and parking are a concern. All locations are serviced for their waste and recycling needs multiple times per week. We do not want to see any business within the town of Stellarton deal with service interruptions and request that you approve this exemption so we can safely provide these essential services to the town businesses community. At no time do we want to cause a disturbance and we do everything we can to minimize noise in residential areas. We cannot remove our backup alarms or caution strobe lights from our trucks under the Commercial Vehicle Act. And we do try to stay clear of certain areas, but unfortunately some areas need to be accessed for early safety reasons. So if council uh, is going to entertain a, an exemption, uh, how that would work is you would have your first reading for an amendment to the bylaw in May and in June there would be a public hearing and then in, in June you'd have your second and final reading which would um, provide the outcome of the public hearing. So if I read through it and uh, for the most part I, I don't see a problem. Uh, I was wondering uh, should we have uh, the police commission look at that yeah. because it is a safety issue. Yeah. Uh, so the the police have been contacted because they are the enforcers of the bylaws and, um, and in speaking with the police and I um, and GFL, the only way around this is if the exemption to the bylaw. The, the only area that I haven't, uh, I shouldn't say a question, is, uh, is up here um, on the other side of the fire department where the, uh, used to be the doctor's office. Because, and I say that because there, there is residence there. 
And, uh, you know, I don't know, they might not like the idea of five o'clock in the morning, or whatever, somebody. Well, it, it's there. come, it's come yeah. to your attention yeah. because yeah. there has been complaints. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the, that's your, why it has come to your attention. The ones on Main Street in commercial areas is, is okay, but in my mind. Ironically, mind, that's where the complaint has come from. Really? <laughs> well, the, I guess the thing is we're going to have a public meeting on it anyway. You will have to have a public meeting, so yeah, exactly. my, my recommendation is for Council to consider this with a first reading in May with a public hearing in June. Yeah, we should have with a enough public advertising. hearing. advertising. No doubt we'll have a public hearing. I know. <laughs> I don't, wouldn't want to be woken at 5 o'clock because some people go to bed, some people work shift. Uh, yeah, but I can understand GFLs. Oh, yeah. Side yeah, of it yeah, too, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah, there's, there's all, you guys in and out. They have, they have a solid yeah. argument there. I, I yeah. you know, I yeah. agree with that. Yeah, I agree with they have a solid argument. And, you know, it is a safety issue, and we're, we're always on top of yeah. safety. But, again, every every decision we have to make, there's always well, a, yep. a pros and cons to it. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, if the public is not, in, if there's no adversity from the public, well then, okay. Yep. All right, Susan, so we got to have a... <coughs> I so, so move. So, okay. So, so this is first reading, first reading in amendment in yeah. May. Yeah. And then a second reading and public hearing in June. Correct. I'll yeah. second that, Susan. So moved by uh, Councilor Lawan, seconded by Councilor Pence. All those in favor, am I saying aye? Aye. Contrary it's, minded, most carry Nancy, thank you. It's a situation, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. <laughs> One of those. The unfortunate thing, most of the things we rule on, we're in the same boat. You know, there's, a, there's always going to be somebody in favor and somebody against. You know. Very true. Okay, so we'll move on to 8D. A thank you from Stellarton Westville Police Corps. Yes, so um, this is from the Stellarton Westville Youth, Youth Police Corps. So the donation we give them every year um, goes towards, um, they went to visit the Atlantic Police Academy. Um, oh, so they went nice. overnight and uh, by all accounts had a wonderful safe trip. That's so great. that's a thank you from them. Yeah. It's nice to hear that like seven, <laughs> seven, young, seven or eight young people went for the trip. So yeah, from both Stellarton and Westville. And we had um, two of our, we had uh, Sergeant Venus, Constable uh, Morell, and I believe it was uh, Acting Sergeant Clark from Westville and Forgive me, I can't remember the second person. Okay. Well, that's great to have yeah. their support. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the uniforms look nice. Yeah, they look sharp. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, Committee of the Whole, number nine, there's no report. Uh, number 10 is the Intermunicipal Amended Agreement for the County Partnership, for we know as the REN. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, so I sit on the Board uh, Liaison Committee. And uh, this has been discussed uh, amongst the uh, six municipalities present and was voted on. In, the, uh, in short, what the uh, amendments are, first thing is we did an amendment last year for an additional year that was only for one year. So this would be for the full five years because the first five years were done last year and we didn't have time to do a, another five years. So we extended only for one year with a, an additional uh, money at the time. This time it's, uh, it's going to be for five years and there's no addition in the money. So that is uh, the essence of the uh, amendments. In 5A, there's also one caveat I want to bring up. Uh, so 5A, the original clause states that the participating municipalities shall not exceed the contribution made by the province. <clears throat> now this was removed by the amendment <clears throat> and the reason for it was because there's a new uh, uh, agreement that's being worked on between the partnership and the province that's hopefully going to uh, come our way. Uh, removing that clause will give more flexibility to the partnership. Uh, no addition to the uh, funding will be uh, granted unless approved by uh, all the municipalities and, uh, and passed through a motion. Uh, so there is no um, uh, we don't have any obligation at this point. The other thing that I want to bring to your attention is uh, Clause 6A. The two major differences uh, from the previous clause is that in the previous uh, uh, contract or agreement, <coughs> uh, the money was due on January 31st. Now it is due on April 1st. Uh, and the other thing that is a little bit of significant, not a lot, but you know that is a change financially that is, uh, 
previously it was a $250,000 uh, contribution from all six municipalities. It will remain $250,000 this year, but starting next year, it will be $250,000 plus 2% 2 cost of living increase. And that would be the only thing that's changing for 6A. Uh, that is it for me. Any question? Oh, that sounds reasonable. Yeah. Any questions for Council 1? Yeah, just ask, what's your opinion on how it's working, Simon? Uh, I think it's working very good. Uh, there's multiple projects on the go, and uh, Wade will be here in May to present, and uh, he will be here on a bi-annually bi basis, twice a year, uh, to come and present. Uh, Wade is a new CEO for the partnership. He's an excellent individual, uh, both from a profession and from a personal standpoint. Uh, I like the guy a lot. Uh, and not only that, he is very eager. Uh, and the amount of projects that's on the go are, are uh, really good. Uh, the simple fact that uh, he's walking the street, or he was walking the street before he got this promotion, and he still is as a new CEO, uh, talking to our businesses, see what they need, uh, and at the same time, you know, working on some of the issues that affects our businesses from a succession planning perspective, from uh, 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 employment and, and, and uh, shortage of, of, uh, of uh, employees. Uh, so, and, and at the same time, uh, looking for project that will benefit the whole county uh, on a bigger scale. So there's uh, uh, many success stories uh, from you know some of the uh, bakeries that are opened in town and outside of the town, uh, and flower shops and uh, other small businesses. And uh, I know personally one person that I know who approached me for some help in opening a, a, a small store that I'm directing them to the pick to Cart uh, partnership to help them establish. Uh, to be honest with you, and that's something that I have uh, encountered early in my uh, life here in, uh, in Canada, is that you don't know what you don't know. So <clears throat> there's a lot of uh, opportunities out there, whether it is from a funding perspective or whether it's just from a resource perspective that you don't know about or know how to maneuver the system in a way that will benefit you. And the assistance that the partnership is giving for those, <clears throat> for those uh, small businesses is invaluable uh, because, again, uh, first of all, people are busy just working. So, so getting into the, the research part of it is very hard. So when you have someone that is already proficient at research and have done it multiple times and have the resource to understand where all the funding is and where all the resource is and what do they need to do, uh, that has been very, very beneficial for those small businesses. And as you know, you know, 90% of our economy is built on small businesses. And don't quote me on that uh, fact, but that's a number that I heard. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so yes, I am very excited uh, about their, uh, their work, and uh, 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 we are uh, looking forward for the future. Thank you, Simon. Uh, and uh, I, I know when it started up, of course, it wasn't going to happen overnight. Things like that have to build. You know, you can't expect it. My only concern was, and you seem to have answered it for me, was the CAO. We seem to be changing CAOs. Uh, you know, we've gone to three since we started, you know, which, which, uh, which alarms me because getting the workforce and keep changing it's not going to yes. help uh, you know, going forward but I, I hope the CAO stays and works and things work through but from a small business perspective we see it right here in Stuller like you say the growth yeah well, thank you very much for the report no thank you yeah thank you to uh, council for serving the LOC and I do concur I think uh, Lady Tebow is a great fit for the position of CAO and uh, Occurring with Council Knight. I hope he stays around for a long time and helps uh, build the partnership. Uh, if everybody's okay with it, I would like to move uh, the amendment. Yeah, and I think uh, Simon's a great fit for a representative on that board. Me too. I move, I, move to I move to accept it. So moved by Councilor Vaughan, seconded by Councilor Knight. Is there any further questions? This means we're okay to sign? Yes. More? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no further questions. All in favor, somebody saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded. Most clear and answer. Thank you. Item 11 is the audit financial statements for March 31st, 2023, Victor County Wellness Center. Are uh, they including the packs? Any questions? That's just for information purposes. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. For information is right. Uh, no motion then on that? Nope, just for information. Yeah. And municipal election update. 
Yes, so I have a staff report which I have submitted to you. I won't read the whole thing. Um, there are three recommendations that I'm looking for Council's approval on tonight. Um, we can approve them um, each separately. Uh, the first one I have, the Council approved the date of the advance poll to be Saturday, October 12th from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. This will be in addition to the mandatory advance polling station of Tuesday, October 15th from 12 to 8 as per the Elections Act. We want to motion for that now on the question your worship so that means uh, it needs to be moved and seconded first I move this is this is you have to have an advance poll so mm. Saturday, October 12th. So, so read that back again. What are you asking for? In the, in the I'm advance? asking for you to approve the advance poll to be Saturday, October 12th from 12 to 8. Instead of? No, in, in addition to the mandatory one on Tuesday, so want, October you're, 15th. You're looking for two advance polls? You need two advance polls. Okay. Are they going to be written about advance polls? That's the second motion. Okay. So this is just for, you're going to have to have an advance poll regardless. Yeah. Okay, I'll, did somebody move on that? Simon okay, moved. Okay, I'll, I'll second it then. Right. Okay, this is going to be the sticky one. Um, number two, that council agreed to a full electronic method, internet and phone from IntelliVote for the 2024 municipal election. Your Worship, I don't have a problem um, question here. I don't have a problem with that, but I, I sincerely feel that if we're going to go electronics, phone and internet or whatever, mm -hmm. that we should have an area here in town for people that are completely... And they will. Are they going to? They, have, they will have two advanced polls and on election day, people will have the opportunity to go to, I think the last time they had it, NS, NSCC, they yeah. will have that opportunity to go there and get assistance for telephone and internet voting. Good. Okay. Well, so I'll, 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 I'll move the motion. Thank I'll second the motion. Pence. Moved by Councillor Pence, second by Councillor Any further questions? So, the... just to be clear, there will be no paper ballots. Correct. No paper ballots except the advance No, there's no paper no. ballots at all. Oh, no. okay. They will have an opportunity to go and talk to somebody with. And, and just. When we do this. And when you advertise it, make sure that it is advertised the fact that we are going to assist people. And they did that in 2020 as I well. I know they did. Yeah. 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 And, and, and the so council. There's no advance poll in 2020, but there will be this. Yeah. yeah. Councilor Pence and myself, and our, our biggest concern is for people that Absolutely. don't use the internet, afraid to use the phone, and are like my God lover, the lady who lived next door to me. <laughs> she didn't even trust her son to vote for her. She wanted, you know, vote so. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, so. Sorry to interrupt. How is that going to work exactly for us helping them uh, vote? I'm just walk so me walk me through it, there please. Will be no different than Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Danny. That's my line. So it would be no different. You walk into. I'm going to assume it's going to be NSCC as it was in the past. You walk into the gym. They will have an information officer at the door checking to see if they're on the voting list. They're on the voting list, you go over here, someone will assist you, uh, they will have a computer there, they will have their ballot, um, their thing that they received in the mail with their PIN number. They will go and the person, the polling DRO or polling clerk will assist them in, in placing their ballot either by telephone or computer. Okay, so uh, I'm assuming they're allowed to see the pen and help them enter the pen, but then after that, it should be easy enough for them to just click a button. Correct. Okay. Susan, uh, uh, Go ahead. I was reading through it there, and it said uh, they're using the provincial and the federal list. Now, what about uh, the new the newcomers, the new people that are of age yep. to vote so now. So every month the province yep. updates their voting list with either through mail um, or um, 
through the MSI registrations, those kinds of things. Okay. That's how they update their list, and it's but, updated monthly. But is there a, uh, uh, so if somebody is not on the list, they can get sworn in at that place, like any so other. So they thing. have to go to advance poll and get sworn in. Correct. Is it? Okay. Or they can go visit Josephine McDonald, and she can beforehand, yeah. and she can set you up. Oh, but, uh, you on go the list. see her. Oh, I see. And and she can can they you phone it into her, but they have to physically visit, do they? That's a good question. That I don't know. I think you have to physically, yeah, I think you have to physically go see her, yeah. uh, but otherwise you can do it at your advance poll or yeah. on the day okay, of vote. Okay, so yeah, no, I, okay, and it's just just a question, something maybe for the future, if, if there was something set up where people that wasn't on the list they could go and speak to. And that's no different than paper ballot was before. You just get sworn in. Okay. All right. Good enough. Just as long as they're able to vote. No. Nope. Uh, my question: You mentioned the cost of going paper. Um, so by having these people there to assist, um, say at the community college with the phone and the, um, is that going to cost us any more? That, so if you were doing paper ballots, you would need three extra staff. Okay. But okay. because you don't, you're not going to go paper ballot now, you would only have the, the original uh, information officer, deputy returning officer, and poll clerk. Okay, so. That's what you would have anyway. Because you said like five thousand dollars if we did paper so yes and then with you would need laptops and that sort of thing for to vote on the list yeah so. and um if we do that this year and find out that a lot of people were not happy with that you, and that this the is voting for 2024 numbers, only okay this is one this year is for deal to see how it goes only. in four years time okay. somebody else can make that decision yeah. Has that been moved and seconded? That's been moved by uh, Councillor Pence and seconded by uh, Councillor Knight. Knight. Thank you. So if there's no further questions, uh, we have a discussion about it. All those in favor signify saying aye. Aye. Like, or opposed? <laughs> uh, motion carried. And the third answer. and final recommendation I would like your approval is that Council approve the electronic voting commence on October 6, 2024 at 12 a.m. to October 19, 2024 at 7 p.m. Well, I'll move. Second that. Moved by Councillor Pence, seconded by Councillor Knight. All those in favor of saying aye. So aye. we'll have to get over early to start Contrary <laughs> <laughs> And hands. just for Council's information, Josephine McDonald is commencing her returning officer duties on May 1st. All right. So uh, now that we have approved all of this, the question that I have is about the logistics of finding out the winner. Because in the last two elections, the the media and no no offense knew before a lot of the candidates and to be honest with you you know that's not really i'm going to throw some caos under the bus here okay. the results are sent to the caos and it is up to them to notify okay hold you responsible we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll hold you accountable then susan <laughs> I will be auditing. I, I am an auditor during the election, so I will be there, and I will guarantee you know, <coughs> Thank two you very minutes much. after I do. Well, I did. Yes, in 2020, you were acclaimed, Councillor Lawand. <laughs> the one before that, I believe there was a, I think there was the website crash. I think yeah, there, there was, was some technical way. difficulties in 2020, yeah. in 2016. 16. Oh, that I don't know. I wasn't. That was before my time. He has sources. Okay. <laughs> All right, Your Worship. Okay, we'll move on to item number thirteen, open forums. I would like to speak at the open forum. Okay. Next council meeting is Monday, May thirteenth, twenty twenty-four, five thirty here at the council chambers. I have a motion to adjourn, please. So.